Welcome, uh, future listeners from On the Gravel. Welcome to our first actual interview uh, with the one and only Jack Davis of J. <laughs> Davis Rape. Uh, number 24-7. I gotta ask first the question right off the bat. Is the number 247 to play on 24-7? Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, yes. we're always joking about how we're working on these things 24-7. Absolutely. I feel that totally that's how like the same thing we feel about uh what we're doing over here but i would say give us a little introduction to yourself huh. um well as you figured out my name is jack davis uh, i'm 24 i've been drifting since i was like 15 and a half since i had my permit i had a stock miata and uh started going to drift events with my grandparents my grandparents and the rest of my family has always been into drag racing, so I got into drifting, and uh, the rest is history. That's, uh, that's where it started. In 2021, I won two pro licenses, one in Texas and then one in Oklahoma as well. And then 2022 was our first year in FD Prospect. Terrible. <laughs> Car broke every event. And then uh, last year, we did pretty well. We finished the season in sixth place, and then this is our third season in Formula Drift. So I've done everything from grassroots to pro-am. I did pro-am for four or five years drifting. Um, and then now we're at FD. That was always my goal. It was always my dream. And we finally made it there. So I'm happy about that. Um, aside from FD and the drifting stuff, I'm a full-time mechanic. So I literally just got off work not too long ago and kind of cleaned some stuff up so we could do this. Yeah. But yeah, full-time mechanic, full-time car guy. Um, me and my friends go to FD and hang out and try to drive try to do, try to do good i was gonna say does it still kind of just feel like a hobby to you like of course it's your full-time gig now but um yes and no like i still work a normal day job so i do this like when i can get off of work yeah. but as far as like the driving aspect of it i would say it kind of feels like a hobby but when it comes to like sponsor relations and communicating with the companies that we work with that's when it starts to feel like a business and i'm not an expert in that by any means so yeah that's when it kind of starts to feel like a job almost versus hey i'm doing this because it's so much fun but i mean they allow us to do a bunch of the stuff we do so it's just something i deal with but it's still very much a passion a hobby that i want to be full-time eventually I had one more like so when you're getting these pro licenses that you said is there like a specific number of them or specific licenses that you need to get to get into formula drift yeah so that's a good question um it used to be until the last few re years really if you had a pro license you could pretty much go to fd and yeah. battle to get into top 32 but right you could go to qualify try to get into competition in mm -hmm. 2021 um I think they gave away like five licenses throughout the country. So throughout the United States, they gave away five licenses for people that could say, hey, you got your license, you can come to FD. And the reason that happened is, I believe it was because of Formula Drift Orlando, or maybe New Jersey, I can't remember. The parking lot was so small, they couldn't physically have like 70 trailers, race cars. Like yeah. they couldn't have 70 pit. So I... I could be wrong here, but in 2021, I think all across the U.S., there were like 23 people that won a pro FD license all across the U.S. at all the different um, organized drifting events. And I won two of them. I had to like write them an email and say, hey, you know, like what's going on? Are we going to get in? Are we not? Because a bunch of people didn't get in because they introduced that uh, five driver cap. Yeah. So I guess to answer your question, typically no, but the last few three four years it's kind of seen that way like they only give out a certain amount yeah. just because they can't have so many people actually show up i was gonna say i was looking at the standings at least for like pro spec and i saw like almost 50 drivers yeah that's like that that's just blows me away i think it opened back up because they got rid of orlando for pro spec just because okay. the parking lot was so small it used to be a pro spec as well then they said no we can't do it the parking lot's too small it's only pro one Plus, yep. a lot of guys have total their cars at Orlando. So it may have opened back up. I don't want to lie to you. It may have opened back up. Yeah, I got you. that's the way it was the last few years. One question that I had for you, Jack, was the – you said, like you said, um, grassroots to now formula drift. 
what's the biggest jump in competition would you say would it be like that like beginner level to amateur or is it you know pro going to even pro spec or fd pro the biggest jump overall would probably be pro spec to pro um obviously i haven't done that i'm in pro spec Mm -hmm. just because like you think pro am's hard okay not that bad you think prospects hard well try doing everything times three with a crazy yeah. amount of budget like it's a pro one's a full-time job you're gone hmm. 10 weeks out of the year you know if you break your car you got sometimes two weeks to fix it before an event so i would think it would be prospect to pro one and probably be the biggest jump going off that how many people would you say is on like an average team for prospect versus fd pro because it kind of varies. There's still a few privateers in Pro One mm-hmm. that have a smaller, uh, smaller team. For Pro mm-hmm. Spec, I would say unless you're the Sorensons, you probably got four or five good guys with you, good friends, teammates, people on the crew. And then Pro One, I mean, they'll have up to twenty people on a team. Wow, jeez, dude. Yeah. For me, it's just me, my friends. We show up, we do the best we can, and that's it. But some people you know they're flying people from across the country every single event that's so wild yeah for me it's like because i know there's a huge drifting scene in like japan and like all of i guess southeast asia um and i know moto gp just got acquired by liberty media do you ever see like a time period where formula drift gets acquired by some like much bigger entity and then it kind of springboards into this giant kind of event yeah, I do. And I think there's been talk of that for the, quite a while. Uh, FD gives us these like analytic packets. And yeah. as far as I know, FD, as far as the media outreach, is right under NASCAR as far as like motorsports programs. Like apparently it's higher than F1. Um, can't tell you the details on that, but <clears throat> yeah, that's I mean, apparently, I apparently it's. That. Um, I do too. Like it's huge just everywhere as far as like social media outreach people watching live stream watching videos like it's growing really big and i want to say i heard a rumor like fd and nascar were having conversations and there was like rumors of nascar one one thing to buy out fd that could be just a rumor i'm not sure but i've heard that um and it's definitely trending that way with the way it's gaining in popularity yeah i would not be surprised if something like that did happen in the future for sure my last question on that is so with fd do you ever like backpack off of other events i guess as like a support series because like when you guys raced at um long beach was that like in line with when indycar was there uh so long beach was pro one i did not go to that event but i believe indycar was like the week before fd gotcha and then i want to say they might have driven the same time as well like one of the days they couldn't drive and IndyCar had a race or something. Yeah. I'm not sure if they shared the same pit space or not, but I would say as far as like utilities and stuff of the track goes, probably. I'm sure yeah. there's some mingling going on there, but I haven't seen it um, anywhere else. I know when we go to Road Atlanta, they're doing like uh, some type of time attack race or something at the same time. So we'll have like some crazy GT3 cars in the parking lot passing yeah. me as I'm driving in the parking lot as well. Mm-hmm. That happens there. Um, that's really about it, I think. I think that's pretty much about it. I could be yeah. wrong, but as far as I know, that's about as intertwined as they get. Of the four current events on the track, or uh, events on the calendar for you guys, which one's your favorite so far? Probably Road Atlanta. Uh, Road Atlanta is beautiful. I've done. So far, I've done the best at Road Atlanta. And um, it's just a really good place. It's nice for me. I've always been better at fast tracks for some reason. Don't know mm-hmm. why. But I, like, if you look at my track record, I've always done better at really fast tracks. I don't know if that's just my driving style or maybe I'm not as quick as the other guys. But I've always done better at big tracks like Road Atlanta, yeah. Utah. Uh, here we got Texas Motor Speedway not too far away. Uh, in Houston, there's like MSR Houston, really big fast track. So probably Road Atlanta, and then I think Utah is going off of looks. Utah is the coolest to look at, but it's imagine. a really big, 
it's really big, like shallow track. So Road Atlanta is definitely my favorite. Going off 100%. that last question, what's your dream, you know, track place anywhere in the world where you could compete at? Ooh, where I could compete? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, actually. Probably somewhere in Australia or Drift Masters or something like that. I'd love to go to Australia and drive. I know a few people that drift out there. It looks really fun. Um, and then Drift Masters has some of the craziest tracks ever. And I would love to go there. So I'll have to look into Drift Masters. Yeah, Drift Masters, though, they got some tracks where you make one mistake, your car's done. Yeah. Like, it's just straight wall, whole track. That's what I was seeing with, with like, Long Beach, at least. Mm-hmm. Long Beach is the same one. So for the for the prospect series you guys are all competing on those gt radial tires right yep yep we're all on, we're all on a uh, 255 champiro sx2 i think it's what it's called yeah. 255 gt radial everybody on prospect i was gonna say so for the for the ft pro stage is there like a huge difference in the tire suppliers oh yeah yeah so for pro one they have like four or five different brands that the drivers can yeah. choose from and it's based on weight so the heavier your car is, the wider tires you can have. For example, yeah. I think Dean Kearney uh, in the Viper, I think he's running some crazy like 325 or something. Huge, crazy tire. And then uh, some guys like Daniel Stuckey with M-Spec, his S15 is so light, he has to run the 255, I think. Okay. A 255 or a 265 Vitor, just because his car's so light. So the big heavier cars, they'll run a bigger tire. Yeah, Any would it pro- just fully... Brand. My apologies. I was going to say, would it just like fully imbalance the car if you were using too like wide and heavy of a tire then? If you didn't set the car up for it, yeah. Like yeah. my car set up to run a 255. If I put a grippy tire on it, all my gear ratios would change. My suspension setup would change. I'd probably have to lift the car because the tire would eat the fenders and yeah. stuff. But yeah, you'd have to change a bunch pretty much gotcha. to make it work right. So with you still still being at the the prospect level, do you have like a specific way that you get into the uh, FT Pro level? I think so. I think it used to be top five got a Pro One license. I think they just Correct. recently changed it to top three. So mm-hmm. if you finish top three in the season, you're granted a Pro One FT license. Then you can register for Pro One and go compete there. Kind of like kind of the same way between uh, Pro Am to prospect. You have to get mm-hmm. top three at the end of the series uh, to go to Pro 1. I think you can also petition for it. I know some popular guys have done that before in the past, or drivers coming from different countries. You can basically say, hey, I'm good enough. I don't want to mess with Prospect. I want to go straight to Pro 1. You can like, file a petition and get in that yeah. way. But typically, it's uh, top three. Kind of going off that, is there a huge difference in the cars? Or is it... <clears throat> kind of similar um, or just you know everyone's around the same horsepower and torque i think it used to be but now most of the prospect cars make almost pro one power like for me my car my car makes like 950 wheel horsepower some of the pro one cars don't even make that but also there are still a few prospect cars that make like 550 600 wheel but as far as like car setups everybody's pretty much so advanced now that you could add a few hundred horsepower and put a big tire on and it would be a pro one car like the level of competition has gotten so high it's almost no different honestly with no points in your last event unfortunately winning this event would mean you would close the gap quite a bit in the standings what changes have you made going ahead into st louis this weekend well thankfully we still got a few points but i think it was only like 32 points or i don't remember how they i haven't even looked at it just because i was so mad i didn't even want to look at it <laughs> that's fair but you still get points you just get like the least amount of points possible interesting i think to get like zero you'd have to not show up or something or your car mm. break down but going into st louis um well my car did pretty well last year at st louis so i already have really good notes from last year Mm-hmm. So I know what gear ratio and stuff I want to run in the car. We have our suspension settings saved from last year as well. I also struggled with the car overheating a little bit at the last event. So we made some changes to our alternator. Um, we made an alternator shroud. My alternator was getting so hot that it wouldn't produce enough voltage to run my water pump. 
so we made a heat shield for the water or the alternator and then i'm also ducting the rear mount radiator a little bit better so it doesn't cycle hot air back through the radiator and then we might make one suspension change to my anti-squat the angle of my anti-squat we might change one thing back there but other than that just making sure the car works i might change the alignment a little bit as well just mm-hmm. because st louis is going to be a little bit more i guess floaty if you want to use that word how New Jersey's a tight figure eight, pretty much. Well, New Jersey, you have a big sweeper in the beginning down to a tight turn and then another sweeper out to the wall. So I'm going to change some stuff with the rear toe and obviously the rear suspension settings from the last event. So theoretically, if everything works, we'll show up to the track and my first lap, the car should be pretty much good to go. So we shouldn't waste too much practice changing suspension stuff or changing the gears or anything else like that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, Everything works right out the gate. That way we maximize practice. We can jump in tandem and just start really fine-tuning our line. I was going to say, I would not want you to have to waste time mingling with the setup. No, no. It, sometimes we'll get six practice laps and that's it. Like, you get six laps, you better figure it out. Yeah. You're going to a competition on live TV. So you got to figure it out quick. Raven, I'll let you run away with your next one. All right. Uh, the BMW E36 is an iconic car. I know Jabari, our mutual, um, drove that car in high school, and I believe he still has that car. Is this your dream drift car? Um, no, probably not. Probably not my dream drift car, but it's the one that makes the most sense for me. My dream drift car would probably be like an E92 Eurofighter HGK. I don't know if you've seen those or not, but I'm not. they're crazy. I'll throw Look up a up. picture in the video. Yeah, they're crazy. HGK E92 Eurofighter. Looks like a spaceship. Looks like a jet. Looks crazy. That's oh, what I, I would love to build. Up. That thing looks sick. Yeah, that's what I would that love to really build, nice. but you got to have some crazy money to build I was going to say, I imagine yeah. a part of which car you pick for this, uh, for competing in, kind of has to do with how easily available parts are as well. Yeah, exactly. How easy parts are to get, how easy the car is to work on, how cheap the car is to maintain or replace. You know, if you have a $50,000 Supra or something and you wreck it, you can't just go buy another $500 one on Facebook Marketplace to get and put a cage in where mm-hmm. an E36 can. So, yeah, parts availability, how easy is the car to work on, and can you find stuff for them easy? Can you replace it easy? I would say are probably my main concerns. My big one. So like with both Raven and I having become like very fascinated and hyper obsessed with motorsports over the years, it's always been something that's been like a part of my life. Um, I'm always like super into picking up new discretions of racing. So like looking into formula drift was super exciting for me. Um, Do you have like a, a thing you think that sets it apart from the rest? I guess. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of things that set it apart. With drifting, it's it's like eighty percent car or eighty percent driver almost, and like twenty percent car. Plus, with drifting, I mean, you have to be perfect in thirty seconds, right? The average run is like thirty, forty seconds long. Yeah. Versus, you know, some GT3 race or spec Miata race, you got X amount of laps to catch up from your last mistake. So with drifting, I mean, you have to be perfect right out the gate on their first few runs and all it takes is one guy to pull the e-brake too long or like it literally takes anything for anybody to win and also with drifting you can have a 300 horsepower car beat a 1200 horsepower car you're not really going to see that in drag racing or road racing or anything like that very often so that's one thing i think it sets it apart a ton plus with drifting it's still really crowd oriented or not crowd but i guess it's very fan oriented right yeah very fan based like at fd events the fans can come into the hot pits they can almost walk into my trailer be like hey what's up man can i look at the car versus some other tracks you go to or some other types of motorsports like nascar or something like that you can't do that it's gonna say they're way more so, closed yeah they're, they're way more closed and everything just seems a little bit more personal i think with uh with drifting you can kind of get to know everybody. Everybody's trying to help each other. Yeah. It's not like dirt racing or anything else, anything else like that. Like I'll walk over to the guy next to me and be like, "Hey man, my car's doing this. I'm struggling with this. They'll come over and start working on my car." Okay, I mean, I hear stories cool. with like drag racing and stuff where guys are like 
holding blankets and stuff over their suspension and over oh, their yeah. motors so nobody sees their setup. No, in drifting, we want the next guy to be better so he doesn't mess up so you can chase him better so yeah. both runs look better so nobody's totaling the cars. I was going to say, aren't you guys like judged on like angles and technique and that kind of stuff instead of like lap time? Yeah, exactly. So it's like line, angle, speed, mm-hmm. uh, proximity, how smooth you are around the track. I mean, there's a bunch of different factors that go into judging drifting. But yeah, yeah it's a judged yeah. event. Like typically if you pass the guy, it's a bad thing. Right. I was going to say, because um, you're kind of trying to go in tandem, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all tandem in competition. So there'll be a lead in a chase, and then you'll flip flop. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's not about who crosses the finish line. It's not about who was faster. It's about who was better. So sick. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen while competing on track? As far as, like, what kind of crazy are you talking about? Like, a uh, car just, you know, pistons exploding out of the car after, you know, being fine um, or you know wheels falling off mid drift i've seen that a few times definitely seen a few wheels fall off the craziest thing i've witnessed was probably at atlanta last event when yeah. Odie bought you, his car exploded because yep. me and jabari were standing up at like the top of the hill my whole team was standing there standing next to jabari i believe and we're sitting there watching and we just see Odie come down the hill huge fireball and where we were where we were standing you could look to your right, and Jared DeAnda, the announcer, was standing on top of this like little platform. So we could literally like look right here and see Jared. So we're watching, or we're watching Odie come down the hill. A car explodes, fire goes everywhere. We can hear Jared on the speaker, and we can just hear him sitting there, like he's he's thinking Odie just died, mm-hmm. right? He's like, "Come on, Odie, please get out, get out, get out." And all we're seeing is this gigantic fireball. We're looking at Jared, and he's panicking, thinking. Odie's burning alive. We're doing this back and forth, trying to figure out what the heck's going on. And then finally, Odie got out. But that was probably the craziest thing that I've seen at a drift event. Guy's engine explodes, massive fireball. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was real bad. Probably the craziest thing I've seen. Yeah, that that definitely would stick out. Yeah. Let's say our last question for you before we let you go. Just based off of uh, the answer you gave us a few questions ago, would you say that Rally and Formula Drift are similar in the sense of community and like fans' love of the sport kind of holding up? Yeah, I'd say so. I, w- I would definitely say so. Um, I'm sure if, if the drift tracks were more like a rally course, I'm sure the fans would probably be on the side of the road watching, you know? Yeah. But I think so. I think the fans kind of share some similarities there. I also think that driving styles are, um, like, you know, very different, but similar techniques at a lot of points. Yeah, yeah. Even even though that they're mostly driving all-wheel drive, uh, I mean, they're still drifting around a corner, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, a lot of them have e-brake. Yeah, exactly. And, like, the whole thing with the, like, love and community, I know, like, you'll have the people on the side of the rally courses who, like, will, like, jump in and help a car if, you know, some massive issues happen on the run, and... I guess I guess you see that with just how close in proximity you get with the fans and in, in FD. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, me too. I've always liked that aspect of motorsport. Me too. It's uh, it's definitely one of the things I enjoy the most is just helping other teams and knowing if I need some help, that team's gonna help me. Plus, we learn so much from each other. So like, a guy today could get into drifting, become uh, become friends with the people around them at the drift mm-hmm. track and learn 10 times faster versus another motorsport, right? You got to figure this stuff out. Nobody wants to tell you. You got to do your research, do all this testing. Or you can talk to that guy who's been running for 10 years. He's going to tell you this stuff, and you're already five years ahead of the guy that just started, you know? So I think that's really important, and I like it a lot about drifting. Well, that, I appreciate it, though. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for talking about what you do and giving us a, a light into the tunnel of what you do and for our fans so it's fun it's a lot of fun yeah. and i love to learn so exactly and I me too. i'm learning every day trying to figure out suspension setups and trying to understand what the car is doing it's something i struggle with but uh i mean me and, me and the team are trying to learn every single day I'm, I'm on the sim i've been drifting for nine years now i'm still practicing on the sim still learning about setups and it's a never yeah. ending never ending process i say that's going to be my next big purchase after building my pc is you know getting a wheel and some pedals and starting that process 
You definitely should. They're nice to have. It's so much fun. <laughs> but well, yeah, I, I really appreciate you doing this for us. This was really fun. Yeah, of course. Well, thanks for having me. I, I like it too. I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys can learn some stuff and uh, hopefully we can let some other people learn things as well. We'll Absolutely. definitely be watching. Yeah, we'll stay in touch, but have a great weekend at St. Louis. Is that next weekend? Yep, next week. So we're going to leave Monday. We have to be, we're going to a private track on Tuesday for some testing that I haven't talked about yet. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Wednesday we'll get to FD and Thursday we'll be on the track. Awesome. Well, I'm awesome. excited to look for you. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hope it, hope it goes well. Yeah. Have a good one, Jack. Alrighty. Appreciate it, guys. We'll uh, talk to you later. Goodbye. Take care.